Number seven, Nathan Chetkuti. Nathan Chetkuti was just 20 years old when he suffered a bite from the world's deadliest snake. He owned a popular YouTube channel featuring several reptiles he kept as pets. One of his snakes was an inland taipan named Fang. Chetkuti admitted being bitten had been his fault. He decided to feed the snakes the same day he cleaned their cages. This sent Fang into a feeding frenzy, smelling its prey close by. The taipan bit Chetkuti on his hand. The 20-year-old began feeling nauseous and drowsy. Fortunately, he had a friend close by who called an ambulance right away. He was rushed to Brisbane's Redcliffe Hospital and was immediately treated. Chetkuti remained in a critical state in the hospital's intensive care unit. He ended up making a full recovery and planned on keeping Fang as well as the rest of his pets. The inland taipan is a deadly venomous snake, first discovered back in 1879. Not only is it considered the world's most venomous snake, but the toxins it produces are adapted to target warm-blooded species. The venom injected through a single bite would be enough to kill over 100 human beings. This species relies heavily on its agile movements and accuracy. It's able to bite several times during a single attack, injecting its venom with each strike. It's not to be confused with the far more aggressive but less lethal coastal taipan. Unlike its close relative, this snake tends to be reclusive and escapes sudden encounters. It might be somewhat surprising that it's also known as the ferocious snake. This is due to its venom and not its temperament, which can be docile when adequately handled. When it does strike, however, the results are almost universally lethal. Number 6. John Robinson John Robinson was a friend of Rob Bedell, better known as the Barefoot Bushman. He was an avid snake collector and had a special permit to keep an inland taipan specimen on display. As Robinson was cleaning the serpent's cage in Sunshine Coast, Queensland, the inland taipan grew restless and bit his hand. Being a snake expert, the man knew the risk such an attack entailed. However, he refused the necessary anti-venom, enduring severe pain and countless symptoms. Robinson managed to survive, but not without considerable consequences. The snake handler suffered severe muscle and heart damage and never fully recovered from the attack. He had to deal with lifelong complications after the incident. The inland taipan is native to Australia, in particular to the semi-arid region between Queensland and Coober Pedy. Since it dwells in extremely dry and remote areas, it's rarely encountered by humans in the wild. It's usually dark-colored, with its skin changing from dark hues to brown-green tones between seasons. This snake is usually around 5 feet 9 inches long, but can reach up to 8 feet 2 inches. That's the average height of a fully grown moose. In captivity, the inland taipan can live up to 15 years. The oldest known specimen managed to survive for 20 years. The inland taipan often seeks to escape the intense Australian heat by finding shelter in fissures on the ground, sinkholes and other animals' abandoned burrows. It preys on small mammals, mainly rodents. It strikes by cornering its victim and then biting it several times in a row. The venom is fast-acting and the attack occurs with blinding speed, meaning that prey really has a chance to avoid it. Number 5. Effects of Taipan Venom in Human Blood Wild animal expert Graham Dinkelman decided to run an experiment on his YouTube page. He acquired a sample of inland taipan venom, wanting to show his audience the effects it had on human blood. Dinkelman poured a few drops of venom into a vial of his own blood. He shook it to make sure it mixed and then waited. Within five minutes, Dinkelman's blood had solidified. He turned the vial upside down and it remained stuck inside the tube, having completely clotted. The wild animal expert remarked it looked just like jelly. This was an eerie experiment that showcased the deadly effects that inland taipan venom would have when injected into an actual human being. Number 4. Ricky Harvey Ricky Harvey enjoyed collecting dangerous snakes. Among his pets, he had acquired an inland taipan. After deciding to sell some of his animals, 
Harvey was placing several specimens in their bags. Mishandling the taipan, he suddenly felt a sharp bite on his thumb. Instead of panicking, Harvey remained calm and collected, knowing what steps to follow. This was arguably the main reason he's one of the few human beings to survive such an attack. He was rushed to the hospital and given the necessary doses of antivenom. He remained several days in the intensive care unit of the Ballarat Base Hospital. Harvey was released when the effects of the venom finally wore off. He praised the hospital staff for acting quickly and supporting him throughout the process. Though in the wild, this snake will only feed on mammals, it eats small chicks in captivity. Many handlers describe the inland taipan as a placid animal to work with, but it's unwise to make it feel threatened or cornered. When unable to escape, it'll strike violently, repeatedly biting its victim. This allows the venom to reach deeper and act faster, and venomation occurs with virtually every attack. This species can inject from 44 milligrams to 110 milligrams. This is a far smaller dose than that of the Indian cobra, for instance, that can release up to 610 milligrams. Its venom, however, is several times as toxic, even in much smaller doses. When bitten by the inland taipan, the first symptoms are local pain as well as vomiting, diarrhea, nausea, and convulsions. In a short period of time, the effects of the attack steadily become more severe. Kidney failure, paralysis, cerebral hemorrhage, and blood coagulation eventually lead to death if the victim is left untreated. The entire process can last less than 45 minutes. Number 3. Unnamed 17-Year-Old A deadly inland taipan bit an unnamed 17-year-old in Hunter Valley. This attack left authorities baffled as this area is more than 620 miles away from the snake's natural habitat. The teenager got to the ER all by himself with a bleeding wound on his left hand. He managed to take the snake with him, which helped hospital staff quickly provide the appropriate antivenom. The boy was transferred the next morning to the Calvary Mater Hospital in Newcastle in critical condition. Since only people with specific licenses can keep this type of snake as a pet, it's unknown how the teenager got into contact with the taipan outside of its natural habitat. It's possible it was an illegal pet, and authorities plan to investigate these suspicions. The patient's condition eventually improved, and he managed to survive the attack. It's vital to inject the inland taipan's victim with antivenom immediately. Unless taken to a hospital, chances of survival are meager as deeply set paralysis usually means the patient won't be able to breathe without being intubated. People bitten by this snake have been known to remain on ventilator support for a week or even longer. While transporting the victim to the ER, keeping the affected area at a lower level than their heart will buy them valuable time. It's important to immobilize the limb with crepe bandages as well as a splint and keep the victim from moving around. Applying ice or trying to suck out the venom is not recommended. At least 10 vials of antivenom will be injected to counteract the snake's venom. Unless the patient receives medical attention within the first hour of being bitten, survival is unlikely. Number 2. Andrew Vaughan Andrew Vaughan was a worker employed by Ergon Energy and tasked with checking power lines near Yipun. Two other employees remained nearby and they communicated via radio as they conducted maintenance work. His co-workers began to worry after Vaughan stopped answering their calls. He was reported missing and soon a search party was deployed. Even though he was found merely three hours later, it was already too late. Vaughan's corpse was discovered and revival attempts were made but they proved ineffective. He was 57 years old at the time of his death. An autopsy was conducted and it was determined that Vaughan died from an inland taipan bite. The doctors conducting the examination believed he died within minutes of the attack as the venom had rendered him unable to seek aid. Official They Will Kill You merchandise is now available at theywillkillyou.com. Some of it is to die for. Number 1. Scott Grant 
Back in 2013, Scott Grant was performing for the annual Building Unions picnic in Victoria. He was a reptile handler and had a surprise for the 300 people in the audience. It involved an inland taipan, the world's deadliest snake. Everything was going well until he attempted to put his pet back in its bag. The taipan seemed stressed and it lashed at Grant. Being an expert, Grant quickly tied a bandage around his arm, but it didn't help his condition. He started convulsing and was rushed to the Royal Melbourne Hospital. Fortunately, once there, his condition was stabilized by doctors and anti-venom was administered. Only a small amount of venom had actually entered his bloodstream, an aspect that helped with his recovery. He spent a week in the ICU and was eventually released. Grant assured the press he was eager to go back to his job and had no hard feelings towards the snake that bit him. Thanks for watching. Would you rather get bitten by an inland taipan or stuck in the middle of the ocean with nothing but a life vest on? Let us know in the comments section below.